400 kilograms of weight, three meters tall and thick fur. This beast has been wanted all over the world for centuries. It's a creature of immense strength and stature. There are males and females, but all walk completely naked. They live in gorges, mountains, or forests, and yet, according to legend, you can't kill them. Because before you die, Bigfoot will curse you. And its curse always comes true. Eyewitnesses say it leaves huge footprints. The length of his paw is about half a meter. To shoe such a Bigfoot would require a shoe of about 64th size. According to eyewitnesses, these creatures are almost three meters tall, which means it weighs about 400 pounds, no less. Add to that sharp teeth, thick fur, and a pungent, unpleasant odor. According to legend, Bigfoot can be tamed. All you have to do is pluck a tuft of wool from its beard. After that, the monster allegedly recognizes the man as a master and agrees to do all his bidding. Maybe that's why for Russian people, Yeti means not only a scary forest beast, but also a domovogo. Welcome to Wild Assault. In the depths of the snowy mountains hidden behind the mystical ice is a mysterious inhabitant. Bigfoot, a creature of legends and myths about whom the most incredible stories are told. One of these stories is the account of Andrew Smith, a scientist who managed, in a sense, to meet Bigfoot in person. It wasn't until a dozen years later that he decided to share a truly mesmerizing story with us. Andrew Smith was from Colorado and was born into a family of explorers. His parents were famous scientists who devoted their lives to the study of various sciences. Since his childhood, Andrew has been surrounded by scientific experiments, research, and discussions on various topics. And from a young age, Andrew had already developed an interest in various types of research. He loved spending time at the library reading books on natural history, astronomy, archaeology, and other scientific fields. He also often accompanied his parents to field studies where he learned to observe, analyze, and draw conclusions. Over the years, Andrew's interest in research only grew stronger. After graduating from university and earning his PhD, Andrew became actively involved in scientific research. He specialized in studying rare species of animals and plants and conducted many expeditions in jungles, mountains, deserts, and other parts of the world. Through his discoveries and research papers, Andrew became well known in the scientific community. His articles and books were widely known and cited. Many young scientists were inspired by his work and were interested in the same lines of research. Given his popularity and influence in the scientific world, Andrew decided to start his own research group. He gathered talented scientists of all specialties around him and formed a team working together on various projects. Their expeditions became even more successful and brought unique discoveries in various fields of science. Through collaborative efforts and teamwork, Andrew's group became one of the most respected in the field of scientific research. One day, Andrew received an invitation to an international conference to study the fauna of the Himalayas. The theme of the conference was very close to his sub-specialization and interests, so he gladly agreed to participate. Andrew participated in a presentation on his recent research in the region regarding the discovery of rare animal species. During a break between presentations, Andrew happened to overhear a conversation among a group of scientists, from which he realized that recently in the Himalayas, a rumor had started circulating among the local population about a mysterious creature, similar to a huge humanoid ape covered with thick fur. Andrew was intrigued by these rumors and decided to find out more. He started asking questions of the scientists trying to gather as much information as possible about the so-called Sasquatch. He learned that eyewitnesses had seen the creature over the past few months and described it as huge, covered in long fur, with extraordinary strength and flexibility. Andrew decided to go on an expedition to the Himalayas to try and find traces of this creature, and perhaps even capture it on camera. He felt that this could be a significant discovery in the world of science and add a puzzle to the study of human history. Some members of the research team laughed at Andrew and his idea to go in search of Sasquatch. They claimed that all these stories about Bigfoot were made up by the local population or simply myths that had no scientific basis. Many of the scientists had refused to join Andrew on the expedition, citing their scientific duties and other business. 
They thought it was a frivolous and crazy thing to go looking for an unknown creature that may have never existed. Despite distrust and ridicule from his colleagues, Andrew was persistent and confident in his decision. He was willing to take the risk and spend all his time and energy searching for Bigfoot because he believed it could bring important discoveries and push the boundaries of scientific knowledge. However, there were also scientists who shared Andrew's position. One such person was Linda. She did some additional research and found several archival documents mentioning similar creatures in the ancient myths and legends of the region. This intrigued her and she decided to join Andrew on the expedition. Another scientist named Max began to look at the idea from a more scientific angle. He proposed a research plan for the expedition, including the use of modern technology and methods to find and study unknown creatures. Andrew was happy to have the support of his colleagues, and after much preparation, they set out towards the Himalayas. The research team faced serious difficulties due to the poor weather conditions in the Himalayas. The mountains were covered in a thick layer of snow, Raging snowstorms and blizzards made traveling on the mountain trails very dangerous and difficult. As they began to climb higher up the mountains, the snow was getting deeper and the wind was getting stronger. The explorers began to experience serious orientation problems, lost their way due to snow drifts, and lost contact with the outside world due to bad weather. It was decided to stay in a hotel in the mountains, which they found on the way to the place where they planned to set up the research base. Here they could take shelter from the snow and wind, get some rest, and organize a plan of further action. At the hotel, the explorers continued to discuss their plans and strategies for finding the Sasquatch. Suddenly, one of the hotel guests named Jomir overheard the researchers talking about Snowman. He said he had encountered the creature several years ago when he went to meditate in the mountains. Jamir warned the scientists against continuing their expedition, claiming that the snowman was a spirit of the mountains that guarded its territory and did not like humans trespassing on its domain. Jamir described the snowman as a huge, tall, thickly furred creature that moved easily and effortlessly across the snowy mountainsides. He explained that the creature had supernatural strength and flexibility with the ability to move quickly over rocks and ice without leaving a trail. Jameer warned the scientists that the snowman was part of local mythology and beliefs for a reason, and that an encounter with him could lead to tragic consequences. He pointed out that scientists who are not familiar with the mystical aspects of the mountains risk their lives trying to track down this mysterious creature. Jameer also warned the scientists that their chances of surviving an encounter with the snowman are practically zero, as he is the protector of the mountains and may react badly to an intrusion from outsiders. The man said it was best to leave the creature to its world of legends and not rush into adventures that could end tragically. Not all scientists took Jameer's words seriously, but his warnings caused anxiety and nervousness among the members of the research team. Some began to contemplate the consequences and risks of continuing the expedition in search of Bigfoot. Linda remained intensely frightened by Jameer's words about Bigfoot. Her hands began to tremble and her heart hammered harder at the thought of meeting such a mystical and dangerous creature. She listened carefully to Jameer's story and saw that the man was serious and spoke very confidently that their foray would be unsuccessful. She became afraid to continue her research, knowing that an encounter with Bigfoot could end disastrously. Deep in thought, Linda resolutely went to Andrew and announced that she was leaving the research team. She explained her decision with Jameer's words of warning about the possible dangers and risks. Linda felt that her life and safety were more important than uncovering the mystery of Bigfoot. She realized that the general distrust of the stories about the Sasquatch might be true, and decided not to take any unnecessary risks. Andrew was disappointed, but understood Linda's decision. He expressed his respect for the girl and thanked her for her participation in the expedition. Thus, Linda left the research group deciding to leave the mystical creature and their legends and beliefs without risking her life. Andrew, despite Linda's departure and Jameer's warnings, remained steadfast and determined to continue the expedition. He relied on his professionalism, knowledge, and experience to handle any obstacles on the way to finding Bigfoot. For Andrew, this was not just a search for a mystical creature, but an opportunity to expand scientific understanding about the fauna of the Himalayas and open new horizons for nature study. 
Max, didn't Jameer's story about the Sasquatch scare you? Andrew asked, looking at his colleague. Max smiled and replied, No, of course, I don't believe in these mystical stories. I'm convinced it's just legends and myths used to scare away tourists. I'm willing to investigate further and find out the truth. Andrew smiled back and shrugged his shoulders. Then let's continue our journey and find out what lurks in the depths of the Himalayan mountains. The next morning, Andrew and Max left the hotel and started traveling to the place where they planned to camp for the research base. They walked in silence because of the silence of the mountains around them. The path was not easy because of the thick layer of snow that had to be overcome with every step. The wind was cold, but the explorers were determined to find Bigfoot by all means. Max was looking at possible points where they could find traces of the snowman, and Andrew was pondering how best to capture it on video or camera. Finally, they reached the place where they planned to camp. They erected tents, laid out sleeping bags, and prepared the necessary equipment for the night. Toward evening, when it was already dark, they made a fire and sat around the fire, discussing plans for the next day. Suddenly, however, strange things began to happen. All the electronics the scientists had taken with them began to suffer interference and interruptions. The flashlights were flickering, the radio was not picking up a signal, and the navigational instruments were showing incorrect data. Andrew and Max looked at each other worriedly, realizing that something was wrong. At the same time, they felt a strange feeling as if someone was watching them. Within moments, they heard strange rustles and sounds around the camp that could not be explained by any known animal in these parts. The explorers' hearts began to beat faster as they realized they might not be alone out here. Max grabbed a flashlight and began to illuminate the surrounding area, but saw nothing. But the feeling of uneasiness did not leave them. As suddenly when Max turned the flashlight to the snowy mountainside, the scientists saw a certain shadow. They both barely restrained a scream when they saw the standing figure they had just been talking about. Sasquatch. Andrew immediately pulled out his camera to take a picture, but the camera got static, the lights went out, and the sound became much more muffled. Andrew was able to turn on the flashlight and finally saw the creature in full view. Bigfoot stood in front of him, his gigantic figure rising about three meters in height. He was very muscular, with broad shoulders and massive arms. Its entire body was covered in thick, shimmering fur that reeked of coldness and mystery. The creature looked like an ape, but at the same time had something human in its appearance. Its eyes were red, glittering in the darkness and emitting some sort of extraordinary glow. Andrew was amazed at what he saw. His heart was racing, but at the same time he was obsessed with capturing the creature on video. Andrew quietly reprimanded himself, realizing that his camera wasn't working. He examined himself and found that all of his devices had been strangely affected, causing them to stop functioning. He lowered the camera and met the Bigfoot's gaze. For a moment, the air was filled with tension. The explorer couldn't believe what he was seeing with his own eyes. When Andrew turned to look at Max, he saw how the latter was so terrified that he didn't move, but only screamed very loudly. Max's screams infuriated the Yeti. He was slowly approaching him, and his eyes emitted a bright glow similar to the very dim light of a flashlight. Max, having stopped screaming and beginning to shake with fear, fell silent. He was paralyzed and unable to move when the Bigfoot came even closer to him. Andrew then saw Max collapse to the ground. Bigfoot quickly lost interest in Max after he lost consciousness and turned his attention back to Andrew. Andrew was also paralyzed and unable to move. He was overcome with a sense of fear of this unknown creature, its power and mystery. Andrew slowly realized that he was facing something that was beyond his understanding of nature and the world. The Yeti continued to study the scientist, its eyes glittering in the darkness, and Andrew felt as if its gaze was penetrating the scientist to his very soul. The creature remained motionless, except that its powerful fingers glided lightly over the explorer's skin as if it were studying him not only with its eyes, but also with its touch. Then he suddenly touched the scientist's head with his paw, and Andrew's eyes immediately, as if on command, closed. The scientist lost consciousness. He woke up only in the hotel room where they had stayed before the beginning of their adventure. Looking around, Andrew saw Linda and Max resting in their beds. He breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that it was only a dream. 
After Andrew had recovered from the dream, he went downstairs to ask the hotel staff what room Jameer, the man who had warned the scientists, was staying in. However, in response, he only received a slanted glance from the hotel hostess, after which she told him that Jameer had been missing for more than five years after he had gone on a trip to capture rare footage of a creature from local myths, Yeti. After these words, Andrew broke into a cold sweat, and he immediately ordered Linda and Max to pack up and leave the place. The expedition was over before it had even started. Linda and Max didn't understand what was going on, and when they asked Andrew why he had made such a decision, they didn't get any answers. But they realized that this research without their leader had no meaning. Back home, Linda and Max continued to discuss what had happened, but Andrew didn't want to talk about it anymore. The scientists decided not to pursue the study of mystical creatures, believing that some mysteries should remain mysteries. Nizhnyaya Tunguska, 1977. This man didn't even explore for oil in a bank. He only organized the search. The work was coming to an end. It was the end of August. It's quite fall in these parts, and the engineer stabbed himself in the chest. During the whole summer, he only sat at the maps, listened to the chiefs, checked the work of detachments and drilling rigs. Not once had he himself gone out on the route, cast a fishing rod, or picked up a gun. It was not summer. And are there many years ahead, he asked himself a question. Soon it will be 50 years. And the chief took everything he needed. He went up the river to the hog he wanted. Three days walk along the path, not through populated areas, without any radio or any communication at all. In total violation of all safety regulations. He walked and walked, enjoying the noise of the taiga and the river. He had a rest and an opportunity to be alone with nature for once. On the third day of the journey, in the evening, not far from the hog, Ilya suddenly noticed a large man standing in water up to his knees. The water was flowing fast here, forming whirlpools around his feet. The man was doing something in the water. He was walking there with his hands, either washing something or collecting something at the bottom. It was the first man Ilya had seen in three days. Hey! Ilya shouted and waved his hand at the man. The man straightened up, waved back, and wiggled his hands again. Hey! The engineer squealed again. How are things on Borovaya? He had come quite close, about 50 meters, when the man standing in the river straightened up again. Water dripped from his hands. To the right he held a large, beating perch, and Ilya was seized with a feeling of dread. In front of him stood not a man from the rig, but a shaggy brown-haired giant at least two meters tall. His eyes burned with red fire in the twilight. His face was grim as he turned to Ilya. The giant waved a fish in the engineer's direction, muttered something in a crackling voice. Ilya stood as if stumped, frantically considering whether to pull down the carbine. The giant stood still and walked leisurely into the forest. Ilya, trying to stay out of the thick brushwood and hollows, keeping his hand on the lock of his carbon, approached the first lodge by nightfall. He used whatever was at hand, wire, branches, rocks. He set a few traps around the shelter to protect himself from unwanted guests. Then he made a fire and sat down by it, clutching the carbine in his hand. He listened to every sound in the dark forest, tensely awaiting the giant's return. But the night passed quietly, without incident. The next morning, Ilya gathered his things and headed further up the trail to the hog. He was lucky that his encounter with the giant had been uneventful and he wasn't about to risk it again. He realized that in these parts one had to be cautious and always ready for any surprises. As he walked, he remembered the look in the giant's eyes, his red eyes and grim face. He was sure that it wasn't just a chance encounter and that the giant was aware of his presence in the forest but he decided not to think about that now, but to concentrate on his task and see it through. So Ilya continued his way to the hog, looking around cautiously and ready for any surprises that might be waiting for him in this wild and mysterious place. Ilya, walking back towards the hog, was completely absorbed in his thoughts, cautiously looking around and ready for any surprises. But suddenly he felt solid resistance under his feet and fell into a hole. He began to scream in pain, feeling that something was wrong with his leg. The cracking of his leg resounded in the silence of the forest. 
and he realized that it might be a fracture or a sprain. With difficulty, he managed to get out of the hole, crawling away until the pain became unbearable and he passed out. He lay on the ground, trying to gather his strength and calm down, realizing that he needed to find help as quickly as possible. Waking up, Ilya felt his leg hurt more, and he realized that he would not be able to continue his journey on his own. He began to look around the surrounding area, hoping to see signs of life or help, but nothing was in sight. The engineer, Ilya, realized that he was in a very difficult position, and he needed to find a way to get to the nearest settlement or call for help as soon as possible. He stood up heavily on his foot, feeling the sharp pain, and began to slowly walk forward, trying to find his way out of the forest and get to civilization. Ilya, despite the intense pain and the coming darkness, decided not to panic and use his survival experience. He chose a suitable place to camp, set up a tent and started to fence it to protect himself from possible dangers. Ilya used all his knowledge and skills to create the safest possible shelter. He gathered birch branches to build a fence around the camp to deter wild animals. He then made a fire and cooked himself a meal from the supplies he had brought with him. While eating, Ilya thought about his situation and what he should do next. He knew he needed to find help as soon as possible, but didn't know how far he was from the nearest settlement. He resolutely decided to stay put until morning and set off at dawn. In the morning, Ilya woke up with a calmer mind. He decided to go on his journey despite his wounds and pain. He left some supplies at the camp in case he had to go back and started heading in the direction that seemed most right to him. Ilya walked all day, overcoming pain and fatigue, but without losing hope and optimism. He knew that many more difficulties awaited him, but he was ready to fight them. But then it rained. He knew there was a cave not far away from him. Luckily, he was able to get there before his clothes got wet. Sitting by the fire in the cave, he tried to chase away the cold that was seeping through his clothes. He could feel his wet clothes clinging to his body and decided to change his clothes immediately to avoid getting sick. Remembering that he still had some spare clothes in his bag, he searched for them, trying not to get them wet. Once he changed into dry clothes, he felt relieved and warm. He settled himself by the fire, drying himself off with a towel and making hot tea from his supplies. The singing of the rain at the entrance to the cave calmed him, and the warmth of the fire gave him comfort and reassurance. He decided to stay in the cave until morning to let the rain fall thoroughly and then head out. Despite the web of events, Ilya remained calm and determined, ready to overcome all the difficulties in his path. That night, when everything around him had fallen into darkness, Ilya slept peacefully in his cave, but suddenly his sleep was interrupted by a knocking sound in the darkness. He opened his eyes slowly, trying to realize what was happening. And so, ahead, through the darkness, he saw a huge body dragging a huge log behind it which was hitting the rocks, making a loud sound. That sound came directly to Ilya and he felt fear overwhelm him. Aye. A huge silhouette was coming closer and closer, making the ground shake under his heavy footsteps. Ilya couldn't believe his eyes. In front of him stood the same giant he had met in the forest. The giant's red eyes looked at him with a menacing expression and his rough hands held the huge log as if it were a toy. The giant's gaze was filled with mixed emotions, fear and curiosity. Ilya couldn't move, petrified with fear. He realized that he had to do something to protect himself, but his mind refused to work out of terror. The huge giant came closer and closer. His heavy breathing made his blood freeze in his veins. Finally, Ilya gathered his will into a fist and jumped to his feet. He pulled a flashlight from his bag and turned it on, illuminating the dark cave. A light fell on the giant, and that's when Ilya saw it up close. The monster was covered in thick, spiky fur that looked like filthy rags. Its sharp teeth glinted in the lantern light, and its red eyes gleamed menacingly. The skin on his face and body was covered in dirt and muddy marks, as if he had just crawled out of the deepest abyss of the earth. He realized that the giant had come with some sinister intentions of his own, and he needed to act quickly. He began to back away, slowly, step by step, still holding the flashlight in his hand so as not to lose sight of the giant. The giant stopped, looking at Ilya with red eyes that radiated menace and malice. Ilya made the biggest mistake of all. He threw a rock at the giant, which made him angry. Ilya felt his heart sink with surprise and fear as the giant began to approach him with tremendous speed. 
He tossed the flashlight aside, trying to defend himself against the giant with something. But the giant was already too close, and Ilya realized that he would not be able to avoid the collision. The force of the blow was unimaginable. The log the giant was holding cracked through the air and fell on Ilya with a crash. His body immediately stiffened with pain and he lost consciousness. When he came to, he found himself in total darkness, trying to realize what had happened. He felt a sharp pain in his whole body and realized that he would have to try very hard to survive such a terrible attack. Carefully lifting himself up, Ilya examined his injuries and realized that he had many fractures and bruises. But he could not lie idle. He had to get out of the situation and save himself as soon as possible. He struggled to get to his feet and staggered forward, ignoring the pain heading for the exit of the cave. The light of the flashlight he had brought with him helped him orient himself in the darkness and not get lost. Ilya realized that there were many more difficulties and dangers ahead of him, but he was determined and ready to fight to the end. With each step, he moved closer and closer to the exit of the cave, hoping that he could get out and find help. After walking a few hundred more steps, he fell and lost consciousness, and when he woke up, he found himself in a hospital. Ilya came to his senses in the hospital. In the darkness, he felt pain throughout his body and weakness. Opening his eyes, he saw the white ceiling and walls of the hospital room. The noise of monitors and the sounds of medical equipment filled the room. Panic gripped Ilya. He didn't remember how he had gotten here or what had happened after the meeting with the giant. He ran his hands over his body and felt bandages and plaster on different parts of his body. He remembered falling in the cave and passing out. A nurse entered the room and was pleased to see Ilya regain consciousness. She explained that he had been found in the woods with severe injuries after a bear attack. Ilya was stunned. A bear? But he had seen a giant, not a bear. He tried to explain his version of events to the nurse, but she only nodded understandingly and said that after such an experience he might have illusions and hallucinations in his head. Ilya realized that no one would believe him and his story about the giant. He was alone in his experience, in his fear, and in his ordeal.